Okay, so we're going to look at some more difficult fractional operations. So first of all, we've got some adding going on here. This time there's three terms. One of those terms is a mixed number. Now, a number of ways I can deal with this mixed number. I can turn it to an improper fraction and then include it in the sixth. Or I can just add it on at the end because it's just a whole number and we're adding. But perhaps it's... Uh, it's a good skill to get used to converting this to an improper fraction, especially when we're dealing with subtraction. Um, in this case, it's addition, but if we were dealing with subtraction, it might be easier to have it as an improper fraction. So how many sixths are in one? There's six sixths, so one times six. So add that on, that comes seven over six. Okay, so after I've converted that, how do I go about this problem? Now I can do it bit by bit. I can take these two and just add these two, but I'm gonna try and do it all at once with a common denominator between 36 and 10. So what's the smallest number that 36 and 10 all go into? When we look at the multiples of six, six, 12, 18, 24, 30, okay? And 10 goes into 20 and 30. So 30 would be our lowest common multiple. They all divide into 30. So let's put them all over 30s. So 21 over 30 doesn't need to change. If this is moving up into 30s, that's gonna be multiplied by five to get 30. Six times five is 30, so I must multiply the top by five, 35. This one is got, has got three times bigger to get the 30, so the top must get three times bigger. Okay, so now we have uh, all as 30s denominators. That means I can combine them to give the final answer. So I know the final answer is going to be out of 30. So 21 plus 35. So maybe you can do a little bit of rough work over here. 21 plus 35. 1 plus 5 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. And then add the 27 to that. Uh, 6 plus 7 is 13. Carry the 1 to the tens column and you get 83 over 30. Now if I want to convert that back into a mixed number. I need to find out how many full 30s, 30 out of 30s, fit into 83. I think two of them do. I'm going to give 60. So two is the whole. What's left behind? Well, there's 23 left behind because uh, two times 30 is 60 and 83 take away 60 is 23 out of 30. Uh, check to see can that be simplified. No, it can't. That is a prime number, so it's not going to be simplifiable. Okay, what happens if we deal with a question with some multiplication of mixed numbers? Can I just multiply the whole number separately? Uh, no. I must include it in the, uh, in the fraction. So you've got to change these to improper fractions. Okay, so change the first one. 2 times 3 gives 6. Add the 1, gives 7. So that's 7 thirds. Multiply by 4 times 5 gives... 20, add the 4, gives 24 over 5. Okay, so I've converted them now to improper fractions. Now, I don't have the use of the calculator here, so I'm going to simplify this before I, uh, before I multiply. It might make it a little bit easier. If you see here, I'm going to end up dividing by 3. Um, well, dividing by 5 and dividing by 3. So I'm going to end up by dividing by 3. 24 can be rewritten. It's, it's also known as 8 times 3, of course. So the, the 3 can be pre-divided. 3 goes into this once, and 3 goes into this 8 times. If I want to pre-divide, uh, pre-simplify before I multiply, because this is uh, going to be divided by 3, and this is multiplying by 3. Okay, so 3 into, into 24 goes 8 times. Now that makes my multiplication easier. Seven times eight gives 56, and one times five gives five. And then I can convert that back into a mixed number. Five fits into 56 11 times, because 55 and one fifth. Now what would happen if I didn't simplify seven times, seven over three times 24 over five? Do I get the same answer? Uh, well, I do, because you'll see what happens. Right. So 3 times 5 on the bottom gives 15, working in straight lines when we multiply. And 7 times, okay, if I want to do this out, 7 times 24, well, 7 times 20 is 140. 
and 7 times 4 is 28. Combine those together, I think I get 168. Okay, so it's still difficult to simplify, but 15 is divisible by 3, and 168, 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 8 is 15, so that's divisible by 3 as well. So I can divide by 3, top and bottom, to simplify a fraction. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Uh, 168 divided by 3, well, you can always do your rough work over here. 168 divided by 3, 3 into 1 doesn't go. Uh, 3 into, carry the 1, 3 into 16 goes 3 times, uh, no, 5 times, not 3 times, 5 times. The remainder 1, 3 into 18 goes 6 times, so we're left with 56. All right, we're back to the same answer. So perhaps it was easier to pre-simplify. Last question. Okay, so I have a negative fraction. Uh, of course, fractions can be negative as well as positive. And I'm dividing by a mixed number. All right, so multiplying or dividing, always change your um, fractions if they're mixed into improper. So I'll do that first. Negative 3 fifths divided by, uh, well, 2 times 5 is 10, add the 1 is 11 over 5. All right, we've got to use our rules of uh, dividing so keep change the sign and multiply by the reciprocal or just call it flip keep change flip Kentucky fried chicken uh, minus three fifths change the sign multiply and five over eleven all right now can I pre simplify here yeah I'm gonna pre simplify uh, the, that five divides into that five once cool instead of doing it like this and doing dividing by 3, dividing by 3, I'm going to divide by 5, divide by 5 early on, before, because multiplication is commutative. All right, so that solves that issue. So now I just multiply, so that's a negative 3 times 1. Okay, 3 times 1 is 3, negative times a positive is a negative. 1 times 11, 11. So if this this is my answer, negative 3 elevenths. The whole fraction is negative. If a bit of the fraction is negative, the whole thing is negative if either numerator or denominator is negative. So you just call it negative uh, 3 elevenths. So if this fraction was also negative, so let's say we were dealing with a different question. We had, uh, let's say, negative 3 fifths multiplied by negative a half. What would that give as an answer? Well. Just multiply the numbers first and worry about the signs then. 3 times 1 gives 3, 5 times 2 gives 10, so we're left with 3 tenths. Now is it positive or negative? This whole fraction is negative. This whole fraction is negative. A negative times a negative, they're both just numbers. Negative times a negative number is a positive, so my answer is a positive. So it follows the same rules we were looking at when we were dealing with integers. If you're multiplying a negative times a negative, you get a positive. If the signs are different, you get and negative. All right, so hopefully that helps you with some of the more difficult um, fractional operations questions.